Hey everyone, this is Pharaoh Silver, the Pharaoh of Beer Money Finance, back with another video. And today I'm going to talk about something that might be a big reason why a lot of you subscribe to me that isn't Atlas Earth related, and it's going to be on personal finance. So I want to share something that came up in a conversation with a friend on Discord. He allowed me to, by the way. He was feeling pretty down after reading several news articles with me on the net worth of millennials that, at least in my opinion, might be outdated at this point, but Nonetheless, um, it basically said we millennials and Gen Zers are screwed. This generation is never going to retire. Cost of living is going up while wages are not. And yeah, if you don't have an inheritance waiting for you when your parents pass on, you're working until you're unalived. And hey, look, I get it. Things are pretty tough out there, but I do see things a little bit differently, especially as someone who doesn't have an inheritance waiting for him himself. And I do think you can still work towards financial independence. You just got to change the way you think about it. See, financial independence doesn't have to mean retire at 35 and move to an island like I remember so many finance YouTubers talk about. And to be fair, a lot of them do talk about it's about heavy budgeting like Financial Samurai does. But at the end of the day... It's not about just going on endless vacations in your 30s, 40s, and 50s. It's more about having options, being work optional. It's about taking control of your financial life. So working is something you choose to do, not something that you have to do. Case in point, I actually enjoy both my jobs as a software engineer and this part-time job I now have on YouTube thanks to all of you. Eventually, once I'm seen as financially independent enough, I actually want to do this full-time. Maybe I might take a short break to play some games that I've always wanted to play. Maybe I might want to go on an extra trip or two. But let's face it, after a while, I'm going to get bored and I'm going to want to do something to better myself. So it's not so much retiring early that I want. It's the ability to do what I want, when I want in the end, including a 9 to 5 or just doing this full time or anything in between. Now, how do I get there? And more importantly, how do we get there? Well, here's five tips you can use to become this kind of financial independence. So let's start with the basics. First, you can't control what you don't track. The first tip is simple. Start with a budget. I know budgeting sounds boring, but think of it as telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. You got to know how much is coming in and what's going out so you can identify where to save and invest. A good basic budget that I do for myself is dividing all my stuff into a dozen or so categories. Some of the major ones include rent or mortgage, the car payment, internet or cable, or both, cell phone, food. This one is a little bit tricky, but, uh, you know, get a set goal for food, car insurance, home renter's insurance, utilities, and then for the last couple related to only if you have a house or condo, property tax and maintenance. I would also add an allowance category and a flexibility category. How much are you going to allow yourself to have fun, this being the allowance category? Myself, I give about $100 a month to do as I please, and if I don't use it, great. I'll roll it over to the next month, and if it gets beyond a certain number, say $300, I'll just use whatever is extra to another bill, like paying off the house early or save it. Flexibility is the other category. You know, life happens sometimes, so you want to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in your budget in case things go all right. Yes, you will be saving the rest of your money into an emergency fund, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't give yourself some tolerance in your budget too. If you don't, you might get stressed to a T trying to keep a strict budget. Second, pay yourself first. This means setting aside a portion of your income into savings or investments before you spend on anything else. Even if it's just 10 or 15% of your paycheck, consistently doing this will make a huge difference over time. It's like building a safety net for your future self. The easiest way to do this, as I mentioned in another video, and I'm going to put that video here in the top right where you can take a look, is to use pre-tax investment vehicles like a 401k or an HSA account or even a traditional IRA. Using these vehicles you can save on your taxes now or if you want to save on your taxes when you're ready to withdraw, you can use their Roth versions like the Roth 401k or the Roth IRA. By the way, fun little tip here, HSA actually goes both ways. It's a pre-tax and a post-tax deductible. Tip three is all about getting into the market. You don't need to be a Wall Street pro or have a ton of money to start investing. Even small amounts grow over time thanks to compound interest. 
It's like that snowball effect. What you invest today could be worth a lot more in 10 or 20 years. And you don't need to swing for the fences either. You want to start with index funds or ETFs. Keep it simple. And as I've mentioned before on this channel, your best bet is probably using Vanguard for ETFs. Or if you want zero cost, not just low cost, like the 0.04% on Vanguard, Fidelity has zero cost total market mutual funds that do the same thing, basically just without the expense ratio. Next up, tip number four, cut lifestyle inflation. Now, this is a sneaky one because as we start making more money, we tend to spend more. It's easy to think, I'm making more, so I deserve the nicer car, the bigger apartment. But remember, more income doesn't mean more wealth if it's all going out the door. The key here is to keep living below your means even as you earn more. Now, I do leave uh, one exception to this rule for myself and technically one and a half, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the one main exception is that I try to keep my entertainment budget to no more than 1% of my gross annual income. Uh, this doesn't count vacations. Uh, if we do save up a little extra in an emergency fund, we use that for a vacation once or twice a year. But again, your mileage may vary, and that might not be something that you'd want or something that you could even do. Um, you just want to stay away from doing anything too extravagant, but do allow yourself a little bit of flexibility, like I said in the previous tips, so that, you know, without that flexibility, I feel like you'll eventually fall off. But with a little bit of flexibility where you allow yourself to kind of enjoy life a little bit, you're going to uh, be able to stay the course a little bit longer. And by the way, that other half I'm referring to is basically just the simple cost of living inflation, basically. So you're going to want to make sure that you kind of keep up with the cost of inflation. And if it gets to be a little bit too much, you're going to have to adjust your budget accordingly. And finally, tip five, diversify your income streams. Look, one job may not be enough to reach financial independence, especially in today's world. Whether it's a side hustle, freelance work, or investing in assets that generate passive income, the more streams you have, the more secure you'll be. Plus, it's kind of nice to have money coming in from different places. It makes you feel a little bit more in control. Even if it's just a small side hustle where you're making a few hundred dollars a month, or maybe even $50 a month, like with beer money apps, like I do here. In my case, I talk about my primary job on this channel all the time, and of course this channel, and of course all the other beer money apps that I do. So yeah, having different income streams like that does help, and again, every little bit helps. In my case, I talk about my primary job on this channel all the time, and of course I have this, the Beer Money Engine YouTube channel, my Beer Money apps, and I'm also operator of a few vending machines north of Kannapolis to make a little extra money. I wouldn't spread myself out too thin though, especially at times when my primary job needs more attention than the usual 9 to 5. But again, do what's most comfortable for you in this case and don't burn out. So yeah, as I told my friend and anyone else feeling like financial independence is out of reach, it's not about, you know, financial independence going off to that island somewhere in 35, nor, you know, we have to go to the other extreme and think we got to work until we're 90 years old. It's about setting yourself up so that you have choices. And yes, you might not retire early or you even want to, and that's okay, but you can have the freedom to work on your own terms, you know, even taking a year off to travel, whatever you want to do, knowing your finances are secure if you follow these tips and continue to do so throughout your life. That's what being work optional is all about. So if you found this helpful, everyone, hit that like button, subscribe to Beer Money Engine, and this was a fun little finance uh, video for y'all. Uh, and the next one, actually, I'm going to be talking about Dave Ramsey's house payment plan, his plan for mortgages. It's a kind of interesting what I learned about it, so I'm working on that as well. Um, drop a comment as well on any tips that you want to add on as well or any jokes you want to make. This is Pharaoh Silver, everyone, the Pharaoh of Beer Money Finance, signing off. I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.